Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel. Uh, Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse set for a major speech uh, just a few months from now. It's going to be uh, coming up in March. And uh, so I came across this thanks to you today with this uh, article titled Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse to speak at 55th Global Forum. And they've got some details I'm looking forward to sharing with you. And they end up speculating on what it is that uh, Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse will be talking about. And uh, I'll share with you my thoughts. I'm not exactly on board with the direction they think that this is going to go, but that's okay. It's fun to talk about this stuff. Um, I also want to share with you a little bit more on a story that I covered just the other day. It's about a cryptocurrency exchange going, quote-unquote, all-in on XRP. And I've got uh, some, at least one comment from that I want to share with you it's from uh, Wheatse Wind who is a creator of the XRP Tipbot, as well as XRPL Labs, which is funded through Ripple's Spring Initiative. And then I'll wrap up this video with a piece that I found to be rather interesting. It's titled, Bitcoin could be better investment than top stocks in 2020's trader. Now, of course, this is an XRP-centric channel. So, uh, I, I'm always thinking in terms of, um, you know, when, when there's an article about Bitcoin, okay, but what about XRP? You know, <laughs> yes, I'm part of the XRP community here. And um, I'll tell you what, in the 2020s, if it's super duper good for Bitcoin, I suspect it will be that much better uh, for XRP. But uh, before we go any further here, if you would please delicately tap that like button. And if you are a fan of Ripple and XRP, go ahead and subscribe to the Moon Lambo channel. And by the way, to everybody that celebrates it, um, not Merry Christmas yet, but... Uh, Happy, you know, Christmas Eve. I always feel weird calling it Christmas Eve during the day, but I guess it's still accurate. It's Christmas Eve, but whatever. So, Merry, Happy Christmas Eve to you. So, uh, Brad Garland, now CEO of Ripple, will be one of the key speakers during the 55th Global Forum, which will take place uh, March 13th through the 14th in Singapore. So, I had to look this up. I went to the official website. So, again, the 55th uh, one of these here. And uh, so it, it, it takes place all over the world. It's kind of all over the place. And so it's been going on for more than two decades. And uh, it's, it's hosted by the Wharton School at the University of Pennsylvania. Um, so they've been in more than 31 countries the world over. And so the types of people that are invited to these are people that are like, notable. Like they're, they're really doing something in the world. So not surprising that they'd want to have Brad Garland House there. Anyway, uh, the event is organized by the Wharton School, the business school of the University of Pennsylvania that was founded with the help of American industrial, uh, industrialist Joseph Wharton. Uh, Global Forum Gathers... Uh, a think tank of business leaders, government officials, and academics who share their perspectives in different business spheres. Uh, the event has already been held in 31 countries. Notably, uh, Garling House will be the only representative of the cryptocurrency industry who will join the conversation. Uh, how about that? So they picked the adult in the room rather than... You know, like the anarchist ideolo ideologists out there that uh, ideologically driven individuals like uh, Bitcoin maxi types. That's not too surprising to me. Anyway, the list, list of speakers also includes representatives of J.P. Morgan, MasterCard, as well as central bankers. So like I was saying, a lot of big names out there. But then they do go on to speculate, okay, making a case for XRP. That's the subheading here. And here's what they write. Most likely, Garling House will use the stage to promote the adoption of the XRP cryptocurrency and touch upon the development of the broader crypto industry. Um, I, I to promote? I I don't. He doesn't really even do that in anything. Like he, he's not just flat out promoting. He talks about the utility of XRP. But from my perspective. Uh, Brad, when he's talking about XRP, he doesn't go to the level of promoting it. He he just, he just says, "Hey, here, here's what it can do. Here's why we're why we're optimistic for it." Um, the closest he's gotten to that the, that I can think of off the top of my head is um, he, when you know because he was asked I don't know about a year two maybe it was two years ago. It was right around the time actually I'm thinking about it that I joined the world of crypto. And he was asked, okay, well, what about XRP price? Uh, you know, like, what would be successful for it? And he goes, look, you know, I don't check the price of XRP um, every single day, um, certainly not more than once per day. And when I, th he said, and I'm paraphrasing now, but this is basically what he said. He, he says, when, uh, 
I think about the success of XRP, I'm looking over a three to five year period. And so that is that is kind of like a, a chunk of that has passed. But that's the closest you could get to saying that he's optimistic even in, uh, as it relates to the, specifically the price of XRP. But uh, he doesn't just go gallivanting around the world uh, just just <laughs> trying to get people to invest in XRP. So when I read that, I thought, eh, that's not exactly how this is. I think that uh, more he's going to speak in, in broader terms because the audience that he's going to be speaking to, not all of them will necessarily be as well-versed in crypto as when he goes to specific forums that are crypto-related. And so I wouldn't be surprised if he speaks a little bit more in generalities, perhaps uh, fintech, this or that. But hey, who knows, if, if it, maybe draw some people in. That are, that are actually listening to the crowd. Huh? Every, every day, we, I always look at it. I try to take that, that, that you know, mental perspective of, we've got a long road ahead here. But every day that passes, there are at least some people learning about crypto, and some of them are going to understand that utility matters and become members of the XRP community. But it, And you can even see like the, the, the um, account activations of XRP wallets. It steadily goes up over time, like very steadily. And so sometimes you get little bursts up, uh, but you know it's I, I haven't seen the rate decrease really. So um, other than re- immediately after a burst, of course. But uh, pe- people are always journey- joining and, and learning about this stuff. So yeah, all good time. Anyway, uh, he recently predicted, referencing Brad Garlinghouse, that uh, the world's biggest banks would adopt crypto the following year, but a lot of coins would also disappear from the map. And I'm completely on board with that conceptually. I I think that uh, you will see that with the biggest banks, and I think that the vast majority of cryptocurrencies will indeed go the way of the dodo. That is to say, they will go extinct. All right, uh, next, here's a tweet from Aquaman XRP who, pegged, who tagged me along with a few others. I like this. So it's JFK speaking. You guys remember that moon speech? He goes, uh, here's the quote. Uh, I'm going to wait for it to restart. One sec here. We choose to go to the moon <laughs> in this decade and do the things not because they're easy. And then I think it just restarts there. So that's just part of it, obviously. But I thought, yeah, okay. <laughs> so referencing XRP, going to the moon. So anyway, shout out to you, good sir. That's a fun little gif. All right, uh, next. Here, I, I got this next piece um, from David Sakaros. I hope I said that correctly. And the title of this was uh, Crypto Exchange Bitchu Goes All In on XRP Expands Huge Number of Base Pairs on Its Platform. And so David went ahead and tagged me along with Roses on the Moon and uh, the Digital Asset Investor. And so this is something I talked about yesterday, so I'm not going to go through the whole thing again. I mean, this is a brand new article. I covered a different article, but it's the same content. But they added something that I did want to share with you that wasn't in the last piece. That's the reason that I pulled this up again. But this is a brand new article from today. Uh, But this just, uh, just for those of you that missed it, uh, BitTrue is adding a bunch of XRP base pairs here. And it's going to bring the total number up to 77, actually. Um, 27 of those are, are brand new. Um, so here's the tweet from Bitru, a small little gift uh, for the XRP community this Christmas. We have 27 new XRP pairs coming soon, with 14 of them arriving on December 25th. And as they state, uh, of course, it brings a total of 77. All right, and then down here, here I want to get to... Yeah, here we go. Uh, Bitru has a, a history of supporting XRP. Um, in April, the exchange announced a partnership with the XRP tipbot, allowing users to convert other tokens uh, to XRP in order to make micro donations through the bot. And so when this happened, and this was April, there's a tweet from We'd Say Wind, uh, April 25th, 2019. I actually must have just missed this. I have no recollection of this whatsoever, but I thought it was cool and wanted to share it with you. Uh, So here's the tweet, April 25th this year. As you probably noticed, BitTrue is a big fan of XRP. As they offer many XRP pairs, it was a no-brainer to partner up to make it easier for users to deposit other cryptos to the XRP tip bot using BitTrue. Uh, their tokens of app appreciation will go back to the community. And then, uh, and then the, the, the right also in July, Bitru announced it was running its own XRP validator. XRP validators are crucial to the mission of XRP as they participate in the consensus process and improve the decentralization of the network. We're dedicated to the success of XRP and hope that others, uh, other exchanges will join us soon. Uh, yeah, they seem uh, rather pro XRP. Uh, so worth worth noting, especially if Wheat Say Wind even feels that way. I mean, let's be real. That, that's a that's a that's a pretty good uh, endorsement right there. If it's from Wheat Say Wind. All right, uh, last here's a piece from you today. Bitcoin could be better investment than top stocks uh, in uh, 2020s. 
All right, uh, and then it starts by stating, Bitcoin turned out to be a much better investment than Netflix, Amazon, Nike, as, uh, as well as other top performing stocks in the 2010s, and it could continue outperforming them. For the first time in history, the U.S. is about to finish an entire decade without a recession, and some of the stock market darlings had enormous returns during the draw- dawning of 2010s. Uh, by the way, to me, that's um, a little disconcerting. Ten years, because, you know, I, I know this just off the top of my head. In the United States, historically, on average, there's a recession every seven years. It doesn't mean it's a monstrous one, but historically, because, you know, what's a recession? It's just a two, uh, two quarters worth of uh, economic downturn, basically, in terms of GDP. Uh, th- that's the textbook definition. So it doesn't mean it's catastrophic like we had in 2008, but uh, I, I, to me, it's like we're past due. So it's got to come at some point, right? Uh, there's indications that stocks are overbought. Anyway, according to Bloomberg's anchor jo- uh, John Ehrlichman, Netflix leads the pack, gaining an eye popping 4,177% since 2010. Of course, that is indeed massive. Um, Amazon and MasterCard have also generated stellar returns for investors, proving stock market doomsayers wrong. And there's a tweet here uh, with some of the better performing entities over that uh, over the past decade, with Netflix right on top there, then Amazon, MasterCard, Apple, Visa. These are names that are probably not terribly surprising to you. And if you want to see the rest of them, I'm not going to read through them all, but they're on your screen right now. Um, however, none of these companies came even close to Bitcoin, whose monstrous growth turned out to be one of the biggest stories of the 2010s. The top cryptocurrency is up by around 8.9 million percent. 8.9 million percent. Damn. Hot damn. As reported by you today, Bitcoin was named the best performing asset of the entire decade by Bank of American Merrill Lynch, B-A-M-L. While the future of Bitcoin remains murky, it's not far-fetched to predict that Bitcoin could potentially outperform U.S. stocks in the 2020s as well. Uh, Trader Josh Rager believes that even those who buy Bitcoin in the 7,000 region could potentially see their investment rise by more than 1,000% in a couple of years. Uh, Bitcoin would need to reach $100,000 to become the success story of the next decade. And so, look, I I am on board with the concept, and this is just an opinion, that's all it is, that uh, the crypto asset class as a whole will outperform the S&P 500 in the coming decade, in the 2020s. That, That would be my prediction here. Even if there's a, an even greater pullback in the short term, there's plenty of time. This development in terms of the blockchain space, the whole crypto ecosystem, it's not going to stop. It's not going to go away. Even if Bitcoin ends up having trouble over the next decade, and I'm not saying it will. I don't know. I don't make price predictions. I, I don't offer financial advice. That I just, I'm just saying, if I had to guess, just an opinion, over the next decade, we're going to see a lot more. And I suspect that XRP will uh, be a huge piece of that. As long as my investment thesis is correct that uh, utility matters and will win the day. But that's it for this video. Again, I am not a financial advisor. Do not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambo.